Welcome to the initial man versus dog bourbon battle. Who's going to win? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to the Bourbon Retriever, where I go in the wild, hunt bourbon, and bring it back for you. Today we are doing a blind bourbon battle between me and my pup Watson. So since dogs can't actually drink whiskey, I set it up to where similarly how you might have a dog pick a Super Bowl winner or any other kind of category, I put some bowls out with some treats. Each bowl is labeled with an answer and whatever bowl Watson goes to first is his answer. So we're gonna do some categories. We're gonna do proof, age, finish, type, and distillery. Now for Watson, He's just got to be over under 109 proof. He's going to guess if it's over under 11 years, if the if it's finished or not finished, if it is a bourbon or other, which would include everything else. And lastly, if it's a legacy distillery, MGP or other. I try to make each question about 50-50 for Watson. A lot of my collection, it's a little higher proof. Uh, if it has an age statement, it's probably going to be a little older. So that's why I went above 10 and over uh, around 109. And then for myself, for the age, I have to be within two. The proof, I have to be within five. The finish, uh, either finished or not finished. The type, I have to guess if it's a bourbon, rye, American whiskey, scotch, etc. And then distillery, I actually have to pick the distillery. I've never played this game with my dog. I've never done this type of content before. So I tried to make the answers and the outcome as competitive as possible. However, if you guys have any suggestions in the community about how to either change the questions up or the answers that Watson's giving, I'm all ears trying to make this the best I can do it. This may end up becoming reels in the future, uh, but we'll see how this content goes. All right, first sample, it's sample green. I got this from my good buddy, Taylor Folds. Uh, you know, with the being a man and a dog, we can't really pour drinks for each other. Also, I can't really pour a blind for myself. So thank you, Taylor, for setting this up for me. Yeah, right, cheers. Right, the first category is age. Well, I will say if a category doesn't apply, we'll just wipe it blank. For example, if the bottle's not age dated, we'll cut that off. If the source of the juice isn't clear, we'll take that out too. This is good, whatever it is. I'm getting a lot of oak on the nose, but it also could be a finish. Sometimes I mistake older whiskey for something that's been finished in a double oaked barrel. So this is my first uh, sip of the day. So my palate's not quite alchemated. So I'm just gonna start throwing excuses out there for why I probably will lose this game to a dog that's not even drinking the whiskey. That's a good drink. Whatever this is, I would buy, depending if it's like $80 and under. I'm gonna go 10 years on age. Uh, I think this is a finished product, not age dated, but we will see. I am getting a lot of oak on there, so if it is age dated, it's gonna be up there. Hey, okay, on to proof. There is a nice Kentucky hug to it, so I think the proof is up there. I'm gonna say 110 probably. Definitely above 100. Is it 115? It's kind of hard to say. So like, I definitely think it's above 100. So at least 105. Is it 120? I'm gonna go 115. I think this is up there. 115 will give me 110 and 120. I think it's somewhere in that range. If I, did, if I really had to guess, I'd go 110. But I am getting a nice long finish on this, which makes me think it might be higher than 110. Now on the finish. Finish, I'm gonna go yes. Uh, I think this is an easy answer for me. If this is not finished, then I, I might have just end this on the first take. If you're interested in the notes on the bottle, I'm getting oak, a lot of oak. That's the predominant I'm getting across the board in this. The nice vanilla sweetness, but it's a sweeter oak, which makes you think it's a finished product. Typically on older products, I'll get more of like the, not tannic, but darker. Uh, more natural wood smelling. I'm getting a, a sweetness to it, maybe almost a fruit. I'm trying to describe what fruit it is though. Maybe a, a strawberry or an apple. There's some type of sweetness there that I can't pinpoint. There's definitely a vanilla oak, and but there's some type of fruit there. Now, on to type. I'm gonna go bourbon. This is very sweet. I wouldn't be surprised if the secondary grain is wheat because this is a very sweet whiskey. I'm not getting a lot of rye spice on it, malted barley either, mostly corn with what I think is gonna be the second grain of sweet, but again, I could be wrong. Okay, on to distillery. This is gonna be the hardest one. If I get this right one out of 10 times, I'll be happy. Uh, I am not a professional. 
And me and my buddy play this for fun every now and then, and I probably lose nine out of 10 times. I'm leaning towards a maker's finishing product. I know Taylor has like 12 of them. So odds are that there's a good chance it's a maker's, but it's so hard. Yeah, I'm gonna go maker's, but this is a good maker's. I've had several of their store picks, and I think this is one of the store picks, but this is one of the good ones. I would say out of 10 store picks of makers that I try, I like about three out of 10. So I don't typically buy them unless I can get a sample, but the ones that are great, oh, they're hitters. All right, before I reel the answers, this is definitely one I'll buy under $80, maybe even buy a backup of, because it is, it's good. All right, time for the answers. All right, we're done, we're done. I. I am not close, but uh, I may just have to quit the show. I might have to let Watson host this going forward. I don't know. If you're actually interested in the answers, this is what they are. Uh, let's see. Proof. It is 101 proof. I am not even close. I said this was uh, 110. It felt hot. This, man, that was bad. Okay. Whew. Um an X for me. Watson actually gets it. He gets under 109, so that's a check mark. That's one point. Age stated. This is non age stated. Thank God. Uh, so, no points for either of us there. It is finished. We both guessed finished, so that's another half point there. Now, type. I'm pretty sure this is a bourbon. Um, I'm gonna go do a little research real quick. So I'm back, I did a little research, it is a bourbon, so I get that, Watson doesn't. That's another half point. And then distillery. Watson guessed MPG, I guess makers. Uh, let me check, actually, this is another research question. I'll be back. All right, so after doing a little bit of research, I'm pretty sure the source is undisclosed, so I'm gonna make that a white for both me and Watson. All right, the bottle is Yellowstone 2023 LE. It comes in at 100, 101 proof. It, it is a blend of seven year, 13 year, and 16 year old bourbons. This does taste and smell old. I wonder how much of those is of the 13, 16. I wouldn't be shocked if it's a little, if it's a good percentage of it. Man, that is good. I wonder, maybe, I wonder if this is Barton. Cause I do like old Barton juice. And it's finished in Tokai, Toki, Tokaki, Toka, Tokaji, Tok, Tokaji, Tokajai, Tokajai barrels. Again, my phenotics are miserable. If you know how to spell it, put it in the comments. Maybe put some FedEx in there. I'll probably still mispronounce it, but if you can help me, that'd be great. So Tokaki, Tokaki is a traditionally sweet wine from Northern Hungary that's, you, that's made with white grapes. So on the website, they say on the nose, you're supposed to get honey, green apples, and fresh baked cinnamon. I think I get the green apple. The honey and baked cinnamon, not so much, maybe a little bit. And on the body, you're supposed to get some dry spice, followed by caramel, dark cherry, citrus, and white pepper. Maybe the white pepper is what I was thinking the proof was. I'm getting maybe the little cherry now that it mentions it. It's funny when someone mentions a note, now that someone you get it. Um, there's definitely a lot of that influence in tasting whiskey. And then on the finish, it says you're supposed to get dry tobacco, honeysuckle, and smoke, smoky oak. So the Yellowstone LE comes in at about $100 MSRP. Would I buy it at $100? I would say yes. This is a good bottle. I'm going to look out for it and see if I can get it. Would I pay much higher than that? I said originally in the video $80 is what I was thinking this was at. $20 up charge isn't that much. $120 might be my cutoff for this bottle. This is my first Yellowstone product and I am in love with it. Now on the value, it really comes down to, it's hard to know how much of that juice is seven years versus older, but for an LE product to only be $100 at this stage and age in bourbon, that's a good value. All right, I mean, this is coming in very close. Watson gets one and a half points because he got proof and finish, whereas I only got one point because I got finish and type, which are both half points, which means, in our first episode of Man vs. Dog, Watson is victorious, which is just horrible because the dog couldn't even drink it and he beat me. Like I know dogs are supposed to have these great noses and 
you know, they can go hunting in the wild and track down the bird. But he didn't even smell this. And he beat me. What am I doing in my life? If you're enjoying this content, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. That way you won't miss any of the content going forward. Additionally, if you want to boost Watt and self-esteem, hit that like button. Try and get it to the highest like I have any of my videos. That way I'll know to make more of this content with Watson centered going forward. So that concludes our first round of Man vs. Dog. Watson won. We'll see if I can get him next time. I'll try and, try and create some treat structure. Not sure exactly what I'll do. Maybe once a month the winner. If Watson wins, he'll get a new toy. If I win, I'll figure something out. Uh, maybe buy a new bottle. Before you leave, if you're enjoying this content, check this video out or this video. And until next time, cheers.